Hey y'all, this is TCA Gaming, and in this video, we are going to go through, you guess it, some more stuff that I bought, some consignments. And then we'll show you at the very end uh, a little uh, gift package that I received from somebody else in the community. Um, I don't know what's in it yet, but I I've got an idea because I did open up the package a little bit. So, uh, up first, we have Rusty. Thanks again for making a deal on the Crocodile and Bayleaf. It is an honor to be able to contribute to your collection. Appreciate you and all you do for the hobby. Love your channel. Take care, Chris. P.S. Additional in, uh, consignment is enclosed. So I'm going to start off with the two cards that I bought off of him. I bought these two. Uh, I got them. I paid eighty dollars for the pair. Which, for those of you who aren't aware, like in the market, you know that's that's pretty far down. Uh, the prices have on a lot of these non-hollows really come down quite a bit. But because um, I was actually expecting them to be, you know, the sale prices, you know, over fifty, sixty dollars a piece, but I'd found one for like forty-five, another for about thirty-five, you know, in recent auctions. So I was at, at that price. I'm actually essentially paying what you would have uh, paid if you were buying it off of eBay as well from a seller. But on his end, you know, he gets to clear without the fees and that kind of stuff. So I think it should work out better for him as well. Because if I just auctioned these off for him, it may have been similar prices. And then you know you lose your consignment fee, shipping, you know that kind of stuff. But I was definitely happy to add these to my collection. And he sent in a few other cards. We've got a Cyndaquil from First Edition Neo Genesis, got the number 56. Got a Dark Alakazam, Gem Mint 10. Um, this is a Dark Machamp. This one is the Hollow. It's a nine. Got the Dark Magneton. Uh, a pair of base set Pikachu's. Then we have a Rocket Sneak Attack nine. We have a Shibuya's. I guess uh, that's how you say it. Pikachu actually has a Damage Corner. I see right there where it's cracked off. I did make sure to take a picture of that. And then finally, we have a Tyranitar from Fates Collide. This is the pre release promo, and it's the staff, which is quite a bit um, more tough to find. Usually, if you got a kit, you would get one of each of the staff promos inside of it, so you get four of them, and then you'd have 10 of the regular pre release kits themselves. There we go. I got these off of Heritage. I just picked them up. I love United We Stand, it's one of my favorite cards in all of Yu Gi Oh! And then uh, this Invader of Darkness was paired with it for some odd reason. But I had mainly bought the United We Stand. I think it ended up being like $80 or something for the both of them. Also have another consignment. This is a smaller consignment, but it does have a few cards in here uh, that I think some of you may like. We got a hit on top. It's a you know just a Neo Discovery Mint 9. Very tough in a 10, but it was not as popular because I believe it came in the theme deck, the wallop theme deck from Neo Discovery. A lot of times the cards that come from the theme decks they were much more common to find, especially since well, this is an unlimited. You could you didn't get first edition hollows in the theme decks. But um yeah, and like I said, a 10 is pretty tough from what I'm remembering on the pop, but it, it, you know, a 9 is going to be fairly common. Uh, we have three Lapras, all of them graded 8. Again, this is a, another theme deck hollow, but the Lapras was another tough one to get in a 10. Uh, we've got a Nidoran, first edition, mint 9, and then we also have a gem mint 10 Onyx. These are all have CS15 in the title. So we have some more trainer deck cards. Uh, those did pretty well in the last uh, auction round, especially the ones that weren't graded. So most of these are graded though. So we've got a Mint 9 Defender. You can see right there, it's got that red back and it actually will say Trainer Deck A uh, in the middle of that card. But we have the Fighting Energy. We've got a Kabutops from Sky Ridge and a Lydian. Got nine and eight, very strong grades. Um, Sky Ridge is super easy to grade in 10 if you pull stuff straight from the pack, but if you find it in a collection, most likely it's still not going to be in 10, uh, 10 condition. So these are still very strong and you could probably save a decent amount of money. Uh, we've got a Machoke from the deck A and A. Got a Machop, which is a 5, not the best. <laughs> we've got a Mag Cargo from Sky Ridge, another Trainer deck A, got an Onyx. Got a Pile of Swine here, Mint 9 from Sky Ridge, Trainer deck A Potion. Got the Raticate pulling the 4 and the Rattata with the 8. Then we got a Sand Shrew 7, a Seal. This is Trainer Deck B's. So that's going to be the Misty's deck. It'll be similar. It's just going to say B instead of A right there. Uh, 9. And then we also have a Vaporeon from Sky Ridge. Very strong grade with 8 again. Here, I'm going to show you guys uh, a CGC. Well, a partial CGC return. I pulled some of the cards out of it. Um, so here we have a Champions Festival. I had bought several of these, or I'd bought a handful of cards off of a guy on IG. A year or two ago, never graded the cards, but I, I went ahead and sent this one in. This is, you know, the stamped one, 2019. I believe I may have a staff or a top 16 or something like that in here too. Uh, we've got a Giovanni's Persian. This is a Mint 9. It's first edition. I believe, you know, the main thing that I got docked for was the centering, but I didn't opt into subgrades. Uh, I'm not, I'm not really big on them anyways. I realize that's a people really like that from BGS. 
people talked about it for years, but I don't know. It, it doesn't appeal that much to me. I kind of get the overall gist of the grade just by, you know, seeing the numerical thing. I think it can make a small difference because um, within like a grade of a nine, because you could have like a a nine plus plus if you had two nine point five subs or you know versus you know three nines and an eight point five sub, but it's still not going to be that big of a difference. Uh, pristine and perfect really aren't uh, gonna. You, you, you basically know what you have with those two cards anyways, and that's going to be the top ones. But we have a Dragonite here. It does have that print line on the right side. I think that's what killed it. it got, but it got the 9.5, so overall really nice. Next up we have a Squirtle 9.5 from first edition base set. Nice strong grade. Got a 9.5 on the Venusaur from base set. Uh, if you guys remember, there was a Chansey that I had in the video. I opened it up, and when I did, I actually dropped the card. And um, it didn't look like it damaged it to me, but the guy who um, bought the pack, he, he said he thought it was. And when I looked at it, I was like, man, this is a really nice looking Chansey. And uh, yeah, I got it graded. Pulled a 9.5. So there that is. Uh, we got a, I had several Tropical Winds graded. None of them did that great, but I did get a 9 on a few of them. That was my highest grade. I had like 40 or 30, maybe, maybe like 30 of them. Uh, Special Delivery Pikachu also graded several of those. I didn't get any 10s on them either. Uh, the highest grade I pulled was a 9.5. Now, this was a 50 card submission, if I'm thinking correctly. And uh, I did pull one 10 out of this one. If you guys remember the first CGC submission I sent in, pulled. 21 out of 50 tens, it was something like that. A lot of that stuff was very hand picked though, so and a lot of this was just kind of broad. I just threw it in. This was the only 10 that I got out of it. It's this modern Charizard V, and this card was actually a gift from Enlisted Leaf uh, while he was here, so that was really cool that it was the only 10 that I got on it, and also still need it in 10, so I was very happy with that grade uh, to see it. All right, another consignment. These right here. CS22, we have an Alakazam, we've got a, the Shadowless one, we've got the Charmeleon, this is Secret Rare from Team Rocket Returns, we've got a Meganium, very tough card to get in a 10, so a 9, this would probably be a, a good option for those of you who are just looking for a, a really nice, clean uh, version of this card without breaking the bank. It's still going to be fairly expensive, um, but it's not going to be anywhere near what the 10 will bring. I still need a 10 myself. Got a Shadowless Neo King Mint 9. Very strong grade. It's got the Polyrath in a 9. We also have a few MetaZoo cards. So we have the Abominable Snowman. And it says it's Christmas 22, so that's what I put in the title, even though the year itself is 2021. I'm not sure you know, how that works out. Maybe it was printed for the Christmas 2020, but it didn't officially release till 2021. I mean, you're talking about you know, literally less than a week right there that um, you know could have pushed that off. But this it's a second edition. This is a first edition Ding Bell on the shelf. Got the Gem at 10. This one says Christmas 2021, but instead of bumping to 2022, this one does say 2020 Metazoo promo. Got the New Year's New Beginnings second edition 2020 promo. Got the New Year's Celebrations 2021. First edition, and then we have second edition Santa Claus. I, I still see this Metazoo stuff kind of trickling in here and there, and it's, uh, it's interesting to see for sure. All right, and then uh, last for the consignments, uh, this is a pretty decent one right here. Got some modern cards in here. Got the Charizard V Max in a 10, but also had the Shining Fates, the Shiny Charizard V Max in a 10. Then, we, then he's going to finish out the Charizard Trio with the V Star, the Rainbow Rare, which is really nice. Next up, we have a Galarian Articuno V from Chilling Rain in a 10. And then we have one Japanese uh, modern card. We got the alternate art. I assume it's an alternate art. I, I'm not even sure what a lot of people are referring to with that because there was an, there was an alternate art type of card that Pokemon did You know when they were um, trying to re-release some of the cards like in Premium Powers, like the Jolteon and uh, the Shaman EX and that kind of stuff. And it was denoted with an A on the card. Uh, as an alternate art promo so that it couldn't be playable again but you know nowadays I think people just call something an alternate art if it uh, if it has two versions within a set which you know we saw a lot of that even back through team up but I don't think people are referring to the same type of alternate arts because you had like the two Magikarp and Waylords you had the one that was really mostly blue kind of bland and then you had that one with the Magikarp where it was really sticking out and I believe that's where the alternate art started kind of getting coined but even today you know a lot of this stuff you know isn't uh, seen as the same type of alternate art 
But anyways, I really like the artwork on this one. I, th I hadn't actually seen this card. Isn't that crazy? I've never sold one of these. I hadn't opened one because I didn't open up Evolving Skies and Mass. And when I saw this card through this consignment, I was like, wow. You know, this to me, this card sticks out. It's, it's really beautiful. But it could also be because it's really the first time that I've seen it. Next up, we got a Mega Sableye and Tyranitar GX from Unified Minds. And then we're going to finish off with a Pikachu and Zekrom tag team full art. All right. The last one I'll show you guys is another uh, CGC return. This one was I had sent on Express. This is all the cards that was on the submission. If you guys remember, um, I got Pokey Chloe her E3 pack. I graded the Pichu and Hop Hip. I was really hoping for a perfect 10 on both of these, but uh, neither one of them got even the pristine 10. They did pull a 9.5. Still very strong grade. Definitely happy to add these to my collection. Maybe one day I'll try to cross these to PSA. But at the moment, you know, it doesn't really change anything for the card itself, and I know that they're in really nice shape, so I'm going to put them back in my personal collection. Also, if you guys remember, I was the winner of the 05 set that went through um, the auction house Heritage or Golden, I don't even remember. Probably Heritage, I do more bids through there. But here's the top 32, pulled a 9. The top 16 got a 9.5. I was very happy with that grade. The centering on these is a little, a um, little, little bit worse on the back. I'll show it to you here on some of the lower ones. We got a 9.5 on the quarter finalist, still you know coming in with strong grades. Got an 8.5 on the tropical tidal wave. I think it um, mostly had to do with the centering that we see right there. And then we have the finalist. People trying to call me. This one pulled the nine. This one I thought was probably the most off center, but the condition was really good. Like you don't see anything on the corners at all. So I believe um, the the front centering doesn't have, or that that needs to be more on point than the back centering, which we could tell on the back the centering's off by quite a bit. But pulled the nine grade. So I was definitely happy with that. Uh, next up, I had a Charizard that I sent in, first edition base set. Pulled the 5-5. Five, five. You know, aesthetically, if you look at it straight on, it looks like a really strong card. But the, the reason I got a 5-5 five, five was because it does have a, a bend. You can see it right there. And this one has that classic line that goes across the, the hollow part of the picture. But yeah, you can see some surface scratching as well. So 5-5, five, five, I believe, is a, it's a pretty accurate grade. You can see the, the bend a little bit more pronounced there on the back side and then finally this is the last card that I had sent on Express I was hoping this Gengar would have a shot at the 10 but it pulled the 9.5 and I believe 9.5 is the correct grade because it does have some very minor um, surface hollow scratches well maybe not many but if you get into it I think you can see a few right in here that might be one there I can't tell if it is on the case or not but I believe I remember seeing one or two right in here. The back side, the corners looked really nice. Yeah, you see a little tiny white dot right there. So 9.5, that's a, that's a very accurate grade, I believe, for that card. All right, so that's it for the consignments and the stuff that I sent in, graded at CGC, kind of combining all of it once. What I want to show you guys now is I got this from... Here, I'll just read it out. Hopefully, you get any personal information in here. But it says, Thanks again for hosting me for the day. Had an absolute blast shooting some hoops for the first time since the pandemic and riding a four-wheeler for the first time in 10 to 15 years. As I said in the podcast, it was my favorite day in, day in the hobby with some of the greatest people in the hobby. So, uh, this is Dan right here. He's, he's uh, got to catch them all collectibles or catch them all collectibles. Yeah, it was, it was a whole lot of fun for me too. So, I really appreciate um, everyone coming out and just Kind of being chill and having fun with it, but let's see what else we're at. All right. So you have an awesome spot there and doing a great job making it your home. You and your family were far too generous having us for dinner when you had guests over, and with all the packs you let us rip, the sheet, the Charizard box you sent me home with, put together a small box of things as a small token of appreciation. If you ever find yourself around the Verona, Syracuse, New York area, be sure to hit me up as you'd be welcome anytime. For now, though, you can get a taste of some of the foods of my area from a farmer's market near me, and I threw in a couple vintage coasters from my local brewery to throw back to our original dealings in my Sid Stein's day, days. Um, naturally, I used to I used some sitting cuties for yourself with the kids as a void fill, LOL. Well, I definitely appreciate it. In fact, uh, Jake, he actually sent me a box of goodies as well. It had some food and candies and games and different things like that in there. And... Um, yeah, so I, I didn't do a video on this. So sorry, Jake. <laughs> I don't. I didn't. Uh, I just went straight into eating the M and M's and stuff. But here's a uh, catch them all collectibles. There's just eBay. You, well, it says he has all these things. Uh, it might be the same on most all of them. 
We have a Utica Club where it really swings. Saranac. So what did you say these are? These are coasters. Check this out. He sent a Charizard. I guess this may be one of those uh, things for my kids. That's really cool, dude. All right, what is this? Utica Coffee. Here we have local honey. All right. I definitely like some honey on some, some biscuits whenever I have the time to, to do something like that. Oh, there's a Charmander. <laughs> and another Charizard. It looks like all of them have something to play with. I wonder if I should even open these things up. <laughs> all right, what do we have here? Oh, now you're talking my language. What do we have here? It looks like some candy. What is that? Black Cream Farms Pure Maple Syrup. Looks like it's uh, some kind of, I don't know, something made out of maple syrup. But now, beef jerky. Yeah, I get down with some beef jerky. We have, man, you took a chance sending all this stuff in the mail. We got New York Pure Maple Syrup. I have to try it out. All right, so I don't know what this is. This like spaghetti sauce, vodka Riggi sauce. Oh, nice! And then finally, he sent some red raspberry preserves. That'll uh, I'll definitely be digging into that. I, I, I appreciate all this. Thank you, Dan. And uh, again, sorry, Jake, I didn't video report yours, but I appreciate all the stuff that uh, you guys sent as a thank you. It wasn't necessary. And I um, hope you guys who are here just for the Pokemon stuff, for the, the cards, you didn't mind me throwing the stuff here at the end. But hope you guys have a great day, and uh, I'll try to get another video coming in soon.